Hi everyone, David Maley from Tech Know How, and today we're back for part two of this series on histograms and skew made easy. So last video, if you haven't seen it, go back and watch it. We went through and did several different neat uh, ways of doing histograms in Python. So I showed you the libraries, I showed you the data, we used the mispriced diamonds data set, which is freely available on the internet, I showed you where to find it. Uh, we removed the uh, nulls, NA values, we uh, showed several different ways of plotting uh, histograms and means on them, how to determine the mean, and how to plot the mean in a vertical uh, line on this histogram, the diamond count by price. So now in this uh, video now, this is part two, and what we're going to do is we're going to determine the positive or negative skew and calculate the amount of skew. So what do you want to look at when you're looking at skew? Well, obviously you want to look at it uh, like this, a graph, and you can clearly see from this, it is skewed to the left. Okay, well, what does that mean? So let's go down here. Generally speaking, when you look at skew, what they want to look at is they want to calculate the amount of skew, and you want to look at the mean, the median, and the mode. So when we look at this, we've got the mean. We already determined that in the last video, mean underscore A, which equals numpy.mean, np.mean of the data frame 1. Remember, we switched the data into data frame 1 from data frame to remove the nulls dot price, the price column. And so all you got to do is recopy this piece right here and you will get the mean displayed right down below, which is $3,932 and basically 80 cents. Now the median is basically the same thing. Numpy dot median instead of mean, same exact code. It gives you the median. The median is a little bit less, 2401. Now there is no mode, unfortunately, in numpy why? I don't know. doesn't matter. So you got to import statistics library, just like this, and then you do mode underscore A, just like we did above, equals statistics.mode instead of np.mode, statistics.mode, and then df1.price, same exact way. And then you run the same, this same part right here, the same exact way, that gives you 605. So you know that your mode is 605, your median is 2401, and your mean is 3932. Now, determine the skew. This is how it works right here. So if you have a positive skew, your mean is going to be greater than your median, which is greater than your mode. Or in other words, your mode is less than your median, which is less than your mean. Okay? If you have a negative skew, it's the opposite. The median stays in the middle. If you have no skew, well, that's an instance where the mode equals the median and equals the mean. That would be perfect uh, no skew graph. Well, that probably doesn't exist in nature. So what we're going to do is look at our data. So what do we have? Our mean is greater than our median. That's greater than our mode. We have right here this one, the first one. See this right here? Very quick and easy to figure out based on the data we have above. So we have what we have a positive skew. Positive skew means skew to the left. Negative skew would be skewed to the right. Okay, so once you've determined that you have a positive skew in this case, that's what we've determined. Now we know how skewed is it? How badly skewed or slightly skewed is the data? So from the above data, we figured out that it's positively skewed, but we also want to calculate the adjusted Fisher Pearson coefficient of skewness using skew. And we're going to use a simple way from Skypey. SCIPY.stats. Okay, you don't have to memorize, you don't know, you know, it's the Fisher Pearson coefficient of skewness. It's a leading factor and way that they measure skew. Um, so, what we got to do is you take this from SCIPY.stats, which is what I just said over here. We're going to import skew. See that? And once you have skew imported, then all you need to do is print the skew based on that data frame column. So in this case, we're using data frame one dot price. So the skew on that is 1.618, which is a very high uh, skew. So if we print that, we can also print it just like this. Same thing, skew, ef one dot price, and we can remove the bias from it. This will give a slightly different answer because it removes the bias from it. And Skewness is less than negative 1 or greater than 1. The distribution is highly skewed. So what do we have here? We have far greater than 1. We're at 1.6. We're above 1.6. 1.618 to be exact. 
So what that means in this case, the price is what? It is highly skewed in a positive manner. It's highly skewed to the left. So if you go back up and look at our data, yep, it's highly skewed to the left. See that? Now, this could be anything. You use any data and figure out where it's skewed and how. But this is exactly how you do it. So you've got to figure out the mean, the median, and the mode, right? And then you've got to figure out from that, is it positively skewed? Is it negatively skewed? Or does it have no skew? The odds are you're almost never going to see something that has no skew unless it's perfect data. So you're going to have you know, either this or this. And you're going to have a positive or a negative skew. And then you want to see, okay, how bad is skew? Obviously, you can look by looking at it. It's very skewed to the left. Okay. And then down here, you just calculate it very easily with skew df1.price. You want to do that first from site stats, and then next you want to do it with the bias removed, bias equals false. And you end up with this, your Fisher-Pearson Fisher -Pearson coefficient of skewness. In this case, it's 1.618 or 1.62. In other case, it doesn't matter, it's far greater than one. So again, we have uh, the price data, and remember, you, have to, you can't say the whole data frame because there's other columns in there, we don't know how their skew is, but we measured the skew of the price column. And so we got to say the price data is highly skewed in a positive manner. And I hope you found this helpful and informational. This is great stuff to know in data analytics, ana analytics, data science, data engineering, and all of those related uh, curriculums. Uh, and uh, hope you have a great day. And uh, Please take a moment to subscribe, like, and share. And please look back at the videos on my channel on Tech Know How. You'll see there's lots of great videos like this on all kinds of stuff from R programming, Python, Power BI, data analysis, analytics, data science, you name it. Thanks again. Have a great day.